We will now hear from uh, the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Donalds. You are now recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, Madam Chair, uh, it has actually been a pleasure to serve with you. I know we have had uh, disagreements in this, in this committee, um, but I think what the American people probably don't know is that we've also had very cordial conversations, whether it's in the committee room itself or in the chamber, or the House chamber or in the hallways. Um, and so with whatever the next steps are in your life, good luck, God bless, and I know that uh, this place will miss you. Please, we were able to honor all of your requests for hearings. I, then I appreciate that as well. Thank you so much, Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair. Um, I seem to be slotted in this hearing, and it's kind of an appropriate time. Uh, obviously, Florida has been a topic of conversation. Uh, uh, since I am a current congressional member from Florida, I also served four years in Florida's legislature. I figure I'm somewhat an expert on Florida law and practices when it comes to the Oversight Committee. Um, a couple things. One. Uh, my first legislative session, I was the author of one of those bills that actually allow for community input with respect to uh, material being in the classrooms, books that are being purchased by school districts. Uh, House Bill 989, I am the author of that legislation, which was signed by then Governor Rick Scott. That legislation allowed for parents and taxpayers in the county to be able to bring objections to the local school board for books that were purchased in the classroom for students to view. Now, I understand at the time the critics, Equality Florida and others said that it was going to allow for banning of material. But the truth is, the, the merits of the bill, the actual process of the bill, because I was there when the rulemaking was done, is that there is a systematic approach for every district to take in public comment about material that is going to be purchased by the school district. And then the school district is the one that goes through the purchasing decisions of said material. So I guess my question for the panel is, do you think it is appropriate for the taxpayers in a county and the parents in a county to actually be at the table when materials are being purchased by the school district using taxpayer money? Mr. Wolf, I'll start with you. We can go down the list. Sure, Quality Florida's stance and my stance has always been that community involvement in education makes education better for young people. And it's important that the entire community is engaged when we're talking about what books we want on shelves, what you know, things we want to be learning in the classroom. The unfortunate part is that that's not happening in the state of Florida. I'll give you an example. Palm Beach County Schools, as a result of the passage of HB 1557, went around the, uh, the community review process and universally banned by decree of the superintendent a whole host of books that had LGBTQ characters in them, that were written by black authors, and the reason given was that it might be in violation of HB 1557, Real HB 7. Real quick point on that. So does the superintendent have the authority since they are hired by the school district, and the school district is the body that spends taxpayer money and is responsible for dispensing education, is it the responsibility of the superintendent to actually examine material that should be in the front of children? Doesn't the superintendent have the responsibility to examine material and make the determination whether it is suitable for a child, let's say, who's eight years old or 10 years old? Well, I would argue that you just contradicted yourself. I did that not it's contradict either, myself, Mr. Wolf. I'm it, saying that the superintendent also has that ability. It can't be either the superintendent does it by decree or the community gets input. If I, would argue, that I would argue that superintendents do a lot of things by decree, not just in Florida, but across the country. But 989, the bill that I sponsored, was for material is purchased before it comes into the school district. Now, once the material is in the school district, yes, the superintendent and his, and his or her um, um, uh, assigns can go through and systematically decide what material is allowed in the classroom or not. Okay, this is the one thing I don't like about congressional hearings because they give us five minutes and there's so much we could have gotten into. One of the reasons I'm sponsoring uh, changes to House rules, but that's another story for another day. Um, I do want to come quick to the essence of the hearing. The violence that has been exhibited against people from the LGBTQ community is horrendous and it is obscene and it should not be tolerated. Uh, we were actually in a, so, a somewhat similar hearing yesterday on a somewhat similar topic. And when it comes to violence, my thought processes do not change. We cannot tolerate any of that. At the same time, the thing that we also have to be cognizant of is how we label the perpetrator of said violence. Because the narrative in our politics is that violence against uh, black people or violence against LGBTQ people are somehow coming from white 
wing extremists. Uh, that is dialogue that has happened in this hearing today. Um, but Mr. Wolf, I remember when Pulse shooting happened. I was in the legislature at the time. I remember, it was horrific then. The shooter in question is somebody who actually assigned themselves and subscribes themselves to ISIS. And to ISIS, uh, 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 theoretical, the theological leanings, not a right winger, not a left winger, somebody that has views that are ab abhorrent here in the United States. So I think if we're going to discuss these things, we have to make sure. I know I'm over my time, Madam Chair. I apologize. But no, no, you're good. But I, I think that what we have to make sure is that we stand up against hate and violence, but we do not at the same time cast aspersions on our fellow Americans until we actually understand the motives of the individual assailants and then deal with it properly. With that, I yield back.